Okay. Hello, I am happy to present Siobhan O'Connor. She is, he, excuse me, they are our uh, WNA's Winter Artists in Residence. Siobhan is coming to us as a graduate of the New York Academy of Art, which is where all of our art, artists come from. This is part of the Eric Fischel Artists in Residence Teaching Program. Eric is an alumnus of WNA and has graciously made it possible for us to have three artists each year to teach and exhibit their work. Uh, all the artwork will be available to see on our art website, which is wnagallery.com. And I am now gonna turn this over to Siobhan who will share their work with us. Hi, um, I'm Siobhan. Uh, so I've been teaching painting one and two this past winter and I've had a blast like working with everybody um, and getting to know everyone virtually, of course. But um, yeah, this is an amazing opportunity. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, uh, Ms. Coleman. Um, so yeah, I pursued painting um, at New York Academy of Art um, and I did my undergraduate program in Boston, where I'm originally from at MassArt. Um, I got my degree in illustration and I thought that it was really fun and interesting to kind of meld those two different kinds of art worlds together um, between like illustration and fine art. Um, yeah, so this body of work was all made in the last year, um, just right before quarantine and during quarantine. Um, and I think the title, I Had a Dream About You, really encapsulates um, this work because this last year I haven't been able to see um, the people I care about and these memories that I have with them that I've decided to paint and depict um, feel more like, are like so distant that they almost feel like a dream. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna share my screen and go through the work. Um, and it's in a slideshow format. So anyone wants to see a particular piece again, I can absolutely go back. So this is, um, this one's called Boys Just Wanna Have Fun. Um, this is oil, uh, oil paint on wood panel. It's uh, 20 by 24 inches. And I did this right before um, everything shut down in New York. Um, this is, this one's called Between the Blinds. Um, I did this during quarantine uh, while I was finishing up my graduate program, actually. Um, and this is also oil on wood panel. Um, and this is 30 by 24 inches. And it's in like a playing card format. Um, I have a couple other pieces in that same format. Um, so this is the biggest piece of the series um, in the show right now. Uh, this is about four feet tall and three feet wide. Um, and this is the only one that's also on linen and not wood panel. Um, and this is called the first of many, referring to uh, giving yourself haircuts in quarantine. <laughs> Sorry, I um it seems to have I'm having trouble going forward. Just one second. I, I've had trouble like that. If maybe sometimes if you click right on the screen, like right on your PowerPoint, sometimes it doesn't know you're on the PowerPoint anymore. There, you there it is. Thank you. Um yeah, so uh th so this one's called the Jack of All Trades. Um this is the same size as the piece between the blinds. Um, it's also oil on wood panel. Um, it is, um, this is the other one that's also in like a playing card format. Um, and this is 30 by 24. Um, and this was made also right before quarantine. Um, this is my re most recent painting that I made here. Um, this is called, I'm straight up not having a good time. Um, and this is a 12 by 12 painting, um, oil painting on wood panel. 
and this is the last piece in the show. So it's six all together. Um, and this one's called Skate Queen. Um, and this is also a 12 by 12 on wood panel. And um, yeah, so if anybody has some questions, I'm gonna open it up. Um, if you want me to go backwards or like, if you just want to either describe the piece or um, if you remember the title, I can go back to it so we can look at that if you have any specific questions. But yeah, I'm just gonna open it up to you guys. All right, Jaheem, I think you have the first question, right? Uh, yeah, I had a question. Uh, I wanted to ask, so what made you start liking art? Oh, that's a, yeah, that's an awesome question. Um, it's the first thing that got me excited about art was music. Um, there was this one album by Alessana called The Thespian and the artwork on it was just amazing. And it had like this incredible like discography that you could pull out and um, had all these beautiful like illustrations on it. And I was just like obsessed with like listening to the music and like trying to draw like the illustrations that were in there and like redo them because um, I got so excited about it. And that kind of like transformed into listening to music and like uh, looking up like lyrics and stuff like that. And then like kind of translating words into like imagery. Um, and stuff like that. So that's, yeah, especially with like my illustration work, that's a, that's a practice that I keep up with and it like keeps me really excited about what I'm doing. Cause like whenever I'm working, I'm listening to music anyway. All right, Clea, I think you have a question, right? Yes. Um, who are these people that are, that are in your paintings and why do you see people? Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, so these people that are in my paintings, um, these are like really close friends, um, people that I care about in like um, moments that I've like shared with them and that I think are really special to me. Um, I don't paint strangers because it feels weird. Um, so I, I think like for me, painting people is like a really intimate thing. Um, and you know, you're spending so much time and effort into like trying to, you know, get their like likeness and like what they look like and um, how they were in that moment that like, you know, there's so much care that goes into it. Like, so um, the fact that I care about the people that I'm depicting, like really makes it that much more um, like enjoyable for me. I actually have um, two questions. Um, the first question I have in regards to one of your paintings, I think it's, I'm straight up not having fun, I think it was. This one. <laughs> I love it, but what was your um, inspiration for this? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so this is my best friend, Amanda. Um, she's also from Boston. We lived together for a short period of time when we were going to undergrad. Um, we, there was this like place I love to go dancing down the street from us and I would drag her there like once every few weeks and like she did not want to go there. <laughs> um, and I've done, I've done like, I think maybe this is in the 30s now, like 30 paintings of her, like it, I could have a whole show of her, um, just paintings of her. Um, but yeah, so this is like this, um, the photo references that I use, I just kind of like mashed together, like uh, pictures of this place that we used to go to. And then a picture that I took of her um, like in Photoshop. So that was like the process for this one. But this was just like a memory of me um, dragging her out one night and just begging her, be like, please, I want to go dancing. And, um, you know, she, she'll go because she like, she cares about me, but she's not having a great time. <laughs> so I, I can tell your artworks are very personal and they have a lot of really joyful memories, sometimes goofy. And I, it leads into my question of, um, how would you describe, um, the emotions that you experience as you make your works? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely goofy. I, I definitely get a kick out of making funny art. Um, but also like intimate at the same time. I think like 
the most intimate moments you can have are ones where you're laughing. Like if you can really make someone laugh, like that's, that's a tr real connection. Um, but when I'm making stuff, yeah. So I think the initial thought process is like, um, how do I capture someone's essence? And like, usually it's like having fun with them. Um, so I'm like, how do I capture something that's like kind of funny, but like not too on the nose. Um, and then I'm like, oh yeah, this made me laugh. And I'll like kind of share like, you know, my photo reference with people and be like, what do you think of this? And you know, if, if they're getting a kick out of it, like I'm like, perfect, let's go. Um, so, I, but the thing is like when I'm making it, if I'm excited about it, like I'm, I'm just like jazzed and I'm working really fast and like, you know, I'm dancing and like just painting and having a great time. And I will work until I can't anymore. <laughs> So I'll have sessions that are like, you know, my average session, if I'm like not, um, you know, if I'm just like starting out on something and I'm not like, so like totally confident about it is probably like three hours. Um, if, if I'm excited about it and like, I was excited about this piece, I will just keep painting and just like lose track of time. And I think I worked on this for like six, six hours straight, something like that. Um, yeah, so like definitely like energetic, excited, um, just trying to like have fun, I guess is it. Thank you. Oh, I was gonna ask, I've noticed like the really bright colors and like um, underpainting a little bit. I think that's what it's called. So I was gonna ask um, what inspires like your color palettes and like the colors that you decide to use in your paintings? Oh yeah, um, I think, yeah, so I think this like, this gives a good representation of like the separated colors. Um, so I, I primarily use uh, the primary colors. So like red, um, yellow and blue. And I use that in like, you know, shifted primary colors. So it's like pinks, like a light blue um, and, and like some really orange yellows. Um, so I mainly stick with those colors. I, I think like what draws me to them is like, I see it in, um, like on skateboards and like, um, you know, tattoos and like, uh, like spray paint artwork, just like really vibrant stuff is like what attracts me to something, um, and attracts me to like other artworks. So I think, um, like using those colors that excite me, like keep me engaged in the work that I'm making. Um, I'm trying to think. What was the what was the other part of your question? Oh, that that was just my whole question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, just colors that I like. Um, oh, the the underpainting. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of like other artists use um, like, you know, techniques to like stain a canvas or something um, where you're playing with like different opacities of paint. So like my way of experimenting with that and having really fun with it is using those bright colors that I love to start the painting um, and then just kind of building on top of them so that you can still see what, um, what I started with. So like this one in particular has a lot of reds. You can see it like in the deep shadows. Um, so, Originally, when I was drawing this with paint um, on the wood panel, I was using a lizard and crimson. So I was just using like straight red. Um, and then after I started building paint on top of it, like I let a lot of that show through. Um, Cause I, I like the, the idea that like, you know, there's, there's like a history that's like present kind of like all at once. Um, so yeah. I have a question, Siobhan. Yeah. Um, could you go back to that painting? Um, I think you said, I, I forget the name of it. It's the haircut painting. Um, this one? Yeah. So, well, two questions, actually. I was interested in the fact that you said you use linen for this one as opposed to wood. Um, and the colors are more muted. And I was wondering if that's a function of the linen or if that was just the way you wanted to use colors in this one. And if it's harder to be brighter when you're using linen. And then my other question is on the, I'm pointing at it like you can see me, but you can't. Um, the, this tube, 
that kind of looks like a snake. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so I'm wondering, I'm wondering about what that is. So I'm interested in the linen and the color on linen. And then I'm wondering what that tube is. Okay, great. Um, yeah. So yeah, that does stand out since it is on linen and like it is, it is more muted. Um, so it's not necessarily a function of the linen. I did start with, um, you know, you can kind of see it in her pant leg, like all the way at the bottom where the cuff is coming up. Like I started with like a purpley red, um, like I did with a lot of my other work. Um, but I think the thing was, was this one took a very long time. Like I worked on this for like a year um, just because it was so big. And like, I, you know, I wasn't really used to, um, painting so large and also I wanted to challenge myself by painting on a different surface. Um, the other like practical thing is like once you start going like really really big with wood panel like there's a high chance that it's going to warp. So this just seemed like the most practical way to make a big painting and also like just trying to work with like a different surface that I wasn't used to. So I think um, you know the the muted colors and um, the surface has a lot to do with like, you know, it, it took a lot of time. Um, so in it being so big, like it took um, a lot, a lot of layering. And I think, you know, in some areas, I really think, I think I might've like overworked it and kind of like lost that um, emotion that I try to capture with like starting a painting. Um, just kind of like that, um, that urgency you know, you can kind of see in like some of my other work where it's just like, it's putting down paint and then leaving it alone. Um, whereas this one, I really, um, since I did, I, I just never really felt like it was finished. And like, I think it was just um, the idea of it <laughs> being so big was like so unfamiliar to me. And I was also like creating more of a space than my other work. Um, I really held it to a different standard and I didn't, I, I was, I wasn't quite sure what that standard was either, which was the difficult part. And what about the tube? I'm interested in that tube. That's a snake. Oh, right. Um, yeah. So this was, so this was, uh, my partner's friend, Chloe and John, um, wonderful people. Chloe's cutting John's hair in like the, the bathroom and, we had to vacuum up all the hair after. <laughs> so John's sitting patiently with the vacuum, <laughs> waiting to clean up. So nothing, uh, yeah, okay, thank you very much. That's great. Sometimes it's funny with art, like in literature, you look for things that aren't there. So, so it's the vacuum, it's not more than that. And um, so interesting, it's a beautiful painting. I love it. I love the bright colors, but I also love the, I noticed that this one was different right away and I, it's just kind of dreamy looking. So I, I really like it. Oh, thank you. I have a question. So I know you kind of answered this already, but I was wondering, um, are you reflecting your own life in most of these paintings or are you reflecting other people's? Um, I think it's, it's, it's a little bit of both because it's like, moments that I think are really precious to like others and then like the ones that I think um will be important to me um so like this it you know this is a moment that's like I'm observing and it's not mine but I'm also a part of it because I'm there um but yeah I, I think it like it takes a lot of trust to like let someone else like cut your hair and um so I thought that that was really like special and precious and like who knew that that was going to happen so many other times this past year. Um, so yeah, I think it's like, you know, like this is uh, me hugging my partner, but also like, you know, he's not visible. So it's like, am I hugging myself? Cause you know, it's, it's talking about like staying inside and like um, feeling a little lonely and like you need a hug. Um, so yeah, it's definitely like, a mix of the two and these are like two um two of my friends that were like having a conversation and it was the summer and they were like running around like spraying a hose and stuff like that um and you know I just thought that they were just like so engaged with each other that they didn't even know I was like taking this photo <laughs> 
Um, and I thought that that was like really special and nice that they were just like so involved with each other. Um, so it's like, it's stuff like that, that I look for um, in, in other people's interactions. And it's stuff that, you know, feeling I'm going off of like my own feelings as well. Um, I did want to say uh, something that I really noticed seeing these works in person and then seeing them virtually is they have in person this kind of glowing quality because of the underpaintings and the way the light passes through the paint and hits the canvas and then comes back out that I don't think you can appreciate properly on the screen because the screen already is glowing. So we just take it for granted that there's a glow. But when I saw these in person, I was just uh, completely blown away by the use of color and just like this beautiful glowing quality. And anyone who's on campus, the work is in Siobhan's studio and I'd be happy to open it up if you wanna come uh, see it in person uh, during academic, academic hour today or tomorrow. Uh, it's absolutely something to see. I think that, uh, I mean, the work is amazing online, but in person, it's really a different experience. So I encourage you to do that. Thank yeah. you so much, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Um, I did have a question. I know you said you worked really hard on these artworks. Would you say that, like, given the fact that this is, again, very personal and, like, um, this is a part of your life, do you think that the, um, the personal part of it is what gave you that momentum to work just as hard for these, um, to create these artworks? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, the personal aspect is like everything for me because it's like, you know, it's something that I, I hold really close to my heart and like I think about a lot and, um, you know, that like making it real in a different way gets me so excited. And I get so excited to share these with like the people that I painted to, to be like, oh, like I really loved this thing that happened that like involved you and like I, just want you to know that like I was thinking about you and like I um, wanted to, I wanted to paint you. <laughs> like, and um, yeah, like they really enjoy that aspect of it as well. It's, it's very beautiful. And I think it definitely is an exciting way to like, instead of taking photos for like a photo album, there's like, you know, these amazing artworks that you have that's reflecting all the things you've done in the past and you've witnessed. So, I just have to say like, this is, this is amazing. And thank you for sharing it. <laughs> thank you so much, I really appreciate it. I would, I would second that. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other questions? All right, I think that that was a really great talk. Thank you for sharing your work with us and for being here and taking the time to explain to everyone what your work is about. Uh, and again, everybody, if you want to, if you're on campus, please come down and, and see the work in person because it's a, it's a whole new experience than seeing them online. So, all right, and thank you. Thank yeah, you thank you all so much. Your questions were amazing. Um, it's really lovely like talking to you about this work and um, yeah, thanks for being here. All right.